This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, live from the Sorg Sanctorium. The Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beefview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk professional wrestling. Wrestling Mayhem Show 598 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating uh, pro wrestling and sports entertainment. We got a hell of a crew here tonight. First of all, on the remotes, we got... No, that's the wrong button. Wait, wait, where is it? There's, there it is. Bobby FJ Town joining us from Flood Town, USA. The right button. The right button. Yeah, it is. How you doing, Bobby? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. The stocks are up. What? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to make casual conversation. <laughs> right, because it's a podcast. See. Okay, sure. Also with us, he uh, <laughs> he is off duty from toy slanging in Poughkeepsie, New York. He is mad, Mike. You guys are really going to want to get gold this week. Yeah, there's. You guys are real. There, there's there's twenty minutes. Ago. Just sign up for the week. It's just, all just to hear. It's going to it's, it's be great. It's all about <laughs> fingerlings, sausage, and titans. Spoiler oh, was that, no, that's, that's a teaser. That's, that's a teaser. Spoiler. Spoiler. That's a teaser. Yes. Titans, oh my. Yes. <laughs> it's definitely a teaser. Find out how these things uh, you know, relate to each other this week on Gold. That's right. Also with us, Larry. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Larry. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> what an intro. Also with us, Larry. Thanks. <laughs> I can't wait till I can plug things that you're working on. <laughs> They're super secret. Because I have nothing else. They're super secret. They're super secret things. Larry has super <laughs> secret plans that we'll reveal to you one day in a special edition of Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> Stay tuned That's next week. Stay tuned right. next week. Where we probably right. ominous. Where we probably won't Larry's, tell you about that yeah, then either. Right. Larry's bringing it back Raw for all. <laughs> Nobody on this show has any idea what you do. Super secret. Who is this guy that shows up? He's a connoisseur of 205 Live. Yeah, other than he watches 205 Live. <laughs> His I'm name indicates that he mutilates things. That's right. Mutilator Larry. Yes. Also with us, back on the couch. You may have seen him earlier this year on Ring of Honor Television in the Top Prospects Tournament. What? He is the heir apparent, Chris LaRusso. How's it going? Thank you for having me. The studio is absolutely gorgeous, by yes. the way. This is my first time in the new studio. Uh, very, very nice ambiance, you know. We've, you know, I've seen a couple of degenerates walk by the window, just, you know, wandering, you know, aimlessly sorry, through their me. lives. That's yeah, just the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Yes. That was just me on the video screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a window. <laughs> yeah, that's that's your window into Johnstown. Oh, good Lord. That's, yeah, oh, that's, that's a bad window. <laughs> yeah. Why don't, didn't it flood? Go away from the looking glass, Alex. That yeah. was... But th- but thank you again for joining us. Absolutely, Chris. thank you for having me. And w- again, wonderful stories uh, on on gold this week. Definitely recommend that. And we'll tell you about how to do that in just a moment. But please, everybody, check out wrestlingmayhemshow dot com uh, to check out this and the other shows we do, including the Raw Wrap Up. We're having a lot of fun with Two Truths of the Lie with Mad Mike on Monday nights and doing that live on Facebook Live. Uh, the Indie Mayhem Show with a lot of great interviews lately. And uh, a great uh, uh, back catalog there as well. And you can also drop us a line to that email address. Good, Good times. times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline 412-206-WMS0. We got a voicemail this week that's going to contribute to our big question uh, we'll get to later in the show. Also, you can subscribe to the show. Audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play podcast as well as video versions on the youtube and the facebook page for wrestling mayhem show and uh of course uh of course uh, uh props to our uh friend basic sickness for intro music and our streaming partner the 405 media.com where they play us every night at midnight eastern time 9 p.m pacific time seven days a week drop in and fall asleep to the mayhem over there that's easy Thank you. Also, please join the Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Mayhem Show. 
And I guess Periscope, too, because we are live streaming Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. The main chat room, you guys are hanging out with us. We keep an eye on the Facebook Live, but we are also on uh, live on YouTube, Periscope, and the Sorgatron Media Twitch channel for anybody that likes to use those. And, you know, not everybody's on Facebook. I get it. That's cool. Uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters. Uh, again, our fan of the show, dollar a level, Bo Diggity! Boo. Woo! Boo. Woo. <laughs> you booed him. Ed Burke Woo. and Bobby F. J. Town. That and, loser. Um, uh, what? That's my, that's my response for the woo. Um. 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 Also, at the, difference. at the Pocky level, $5. Uh, level uh, uh, that are going to be getting our Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold in those great stories. Our, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop, and at the $10 Pizza Club level that gets all that, plus the state of the show, Billy F. and Johnson. And, of course, you guys can also uh, check out the $20 uh, manager level, also available. That includes an exclusive digital download from our partners, IndieWrestling.us, which could include a match with Chris LaRusso. He has a lot of that over there. Yeah, absolutely. We got Super Indie this year. We got a lot of good stuff. So. Yeah, absolutely. And see, his, see his title year. run with the Super Indie title. Absolutely. See what happens when he gets in the ring with yeah, the Titan. We, 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 yeah, we don't need I, to see you know, that. Uh, there, was the, there was that one tussle with the T-Rex that you had. Uh, Bulg Nasty took care of that. That is know, true. That, yeah, he, he 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 cleaned that up real quick. So. Absolutely. Uh, so let's get into the wrestling talk. And uh, I think the most interesting news of the week... And I think I think uh, a mainstream Matt introduced this concept the right way on the on the on the Facebook group this week, where he said it's like a real life um, uh, sold out. That's <laughs> probably going to be a little bit better. Uh, apparently, Cody Rose and the Young Bucks are planning to self finance a ten thousand seat event in twenty eighteen. What? Mm-hmm. Which is a good homage to that because I mean they're really you know very NWO and um, click and you know inspired and everything like that. Um, and there's a wonderful there's a wonderful picture of them just oh, standing in the arena apparently <laughs> that they're going to well, be they're, using. They're 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 scouting a couple locations. I don't yeah. know that they've they I don't think they have an arena yet. Okay, but I know that they're scouting not only um, sites in the United States but they're also in england as well because i know marty Skrull uh suggested um i can't remember I, it's not the o2 but it, i think it's like one of the side mm-hmm. venues to the o2 and um you know there's been there there's they haven't announced yet where they intend to uh uh where they intend to have it so this is interesting so i if i'm if i'm getting the timeline right from these articles this was apparently dave Meltzer from the wrestling observer Tweeted earlier this year saying ROH wouldn't sell out a 10,000 seat show anytime soon. And Cody responded saying he'd <laughs> take that bet, mm-hmm. which has mm-hmm. apparently led to this. Mm-hmm. Which, and I, and we were starting to look at the numbers. And, 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 uh, let's see if I still have that up. I do. Yeah, I actually do. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, you know, Stage AE sold out show had, mm-hmm. I don't know what, maybe a thousand people, if that. 800 to a thousand. 800 to a thousand people there. Hot night, Mm -hmm. great show, crazy crowd, really cool for them. But it's a far cry from the, you know, 12,000 seat regular arenas that you see WWE television, SmackDown Raw and the the Mm pay-per-views. So so just to get an idea, uh, there's there's this is uh, PW Ponderings had this article I found uh, where it talks about uh, the beginning of the year 2017 total attendance about 22 shows, 24,307 average number of fans per show. Um, eleven oh five, which is it's impressive. That's good. That's yeah, good that's for good. something. You know, they're syndicated television, drawing these. You know, five five hundred to a thousand show. You know, people. Mm-hmm. You know, per show. You know, it looks impressive for that. It just you know you compare it to WWE. Obviously, it's a different level. Mm-hmm. And, and by comparison, looking at the same six month period in twenty twelve, that average was six hundred and seventy one. Oof. So, and this is like. Probably not even Sinclair television yet. They're probably on yeah. HD. Net. I don't think they were on. I don't think they were on any television at that point. They may have still been just DVD exclusive. That could be. Yeah. That could be. So so and and even for that same period, total attendance twelve thousand seven hundred fifty. So they have effectively doubled ish their attend regular attendance. But again, and I think we did. I did look up 
their highest number as well. And that was, I think, 3,000 fans in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, would that be Mania Weekend? Probably Mania Weekend. That's Mania Weekend, yeah. So you have a lot going into that. and they, But mm-hmm. still, only about 3,000 fans. and saying they're going to do 10,000. I feel like I feel like England's the way the way you would do that, unless they're doing another Mania weekend. Well, I see. I could see them doing a Mania weekend. I could also see there being a couple of potential matches. I don't know that mm-hmm. that there there's a couple big money matches that might alone draw. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I, Omega in. one is the Omega and Cody Rhodes. That mm-hmm. would be you know uh, the Elite and the Bullet Club breaking apart. Um, and I think the other one, and this is of course the, the big speculation is, is that if you look what they said, they said they want to run it in 2018. Daniel Bryan's contract expires Mm -hmm. in late 2018. And he, if he chooses to can, will be a a free agent and a, a Cody Rhodes or a, a Cody Rhodes, uh, Daniel Bryan or a Kenny Omega, Daniel Bryan match, I think, could also uh, fill a 10,000-seat ten, uh, 10, arena. Mm-hmm. Cody that... said he wants that as his dream match. Yeah. Him versus Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan. Mm-hmm. And there's, I, I think Daniel's been saying that he's ready to go, but WWE doesn't let him. Mm-hmm. But kind of considering kind of the talk before when he was trying to wrestle and they wouldn't let him, and, mm-hmm. and he was having... Like blackouts or something at the time. Seizures, I think. seizures. They yeah. have many seizures, yeah, right? Seizures. So yeah. you know, I it's kind of like that Kurt Angle thing. It was like you know, oh, okay, Kurt Angle's doing great, but please don't die. You've had like three broken necks, yeah, mm-hmm. right. And you kind of have that with Daniel Bryan's. Like, man, I love to see him wrestle, but I kind of I mean, like you being able to walk. You um, could also bring in guys like there are bigger indie guys who are not indie guys necessarily, but free agent guys like. Um, even if you don't go the Daniel Bryan route, uh, I I'd, I'd try and see a Kenny Omega versus Rey Mysterio match. Uh, that, that, that's yeah, that's yeah. Just, that's me personally. Like I I'd like to see that. I think that'd be interesting. And we're mm-hmm. seeing it in Japan. Jericho could do something. I mean, that's happening mm-hmm. in Japan. Uh, uh, Jer- Jericho will be back in WWE by then. You well, think? Crepes, you get you get Here's, Omega and a boost. Jericho there. wants that mania payback. Guys. Absolutely. The chat room's also ringing in with some interesting commentary here. Alex is talking if they go to Chicago, what would happen if they would bring in CM Punk? They could sell a 10K yeah. with CM Punk. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, even if they don't have him wrestle, if they just announce he's going to be there, they could sell 10K. And get China. him on the phone with The Rock again. Uh, <laughs> t- t- Tina's making a selfish point. If Daniel is a part of it, please have it be here in, C- in the Seattle area. The scene is yeah. uh, is growing out there. And, and she's been she's been showing us a lot of great matches that have been happening on a lot of those indie mm-hmm. shows. Well, Plus, it's his hometown. So. Dave, Dave Podner also commented that if you have Kenny Omega, West Coast makes sense anyway. Absolutely. And well, doing I mean, the a Bucks- crossover with NJ... PW that that would just be and the Bucks are from California as well. They obviously yeah. have a uh, a strong Rancho following Kong. out there. And uh, when uh, New Japan did the G One specials in uh, California, they both sold out in like less than twenty four hours. Were they five thousand seats? Were, they were both. I think they were around five thousand seat arenas. The the one convention center like added seats, and they but it still was nowhere near uh, mm. nowhere near ten thousand. Um, you know, and, and and also a lot of it will be not just the right vent. It, it'll be the right market, the right venue, and the right match. Mm-hmm. And if they can get all of those lined up, because you know, you could say, well, you know, Chicago or New York, but some of the arenas in those markets might be cost prohibitive, mm-hmm. and it just may not. Even if you absolutely sold out, just what it would cost to run a show uh, in New York City or in uh, Chicago might not ultimately be worth it, especially if they're, if they're going to try and get, uh, you know, hit that attendance point, you don't want the tickets to be too expensive. Right. So does that mean they go to a B market? Do they try and do it in, you know, Seattle? Do they try and do it in Philadelphia? Do they try and do it, you know, anywhere? Well, do they have, what arenas are there that can support that? Like, um, I remember Ring of Honor did the Nashville Municipal Auditorium, I think two years ago and they did very well there, but it was, a like, I think they had like 900 to a thousand, but that building was so big 
that it didn't seem like like there was an entire empty upper deck and uh, similar in, in in Wheeling they did the the mm-hmm. arena down there which the, is a, yeah. a single A maybe triple A uh, hockey the, the team. west the West Banco Arena yeah. which and they and they drew very well I think they they drew nine hundred to a thousand there as well mm-hmm. but it was a you know it, it was a minor league hockey state and and it was and just they had a uh, it was a barn they couldn't fill it mm-hmm. you know. Absolutely. And they had AJ Styles versus uh, Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel is the main Which event. Is just a, it, and that was for TV, and mm-hmm. it was like a half an hour, just just one of the best matches I've ever seen in person. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it was you know in Wheeling, you know, and it was it was, it was a really weird mm-hmm. setup because it was you had the floor, and then you kind of had the one side of the arena that they had some seats. Mm-hmm. You know, and it that was, was it. And that was it. It was it was just it, it was an awkward setup. Really. It was it was an interesting interesting choice as well because I think they had been doing Pittsburgh at that point, but they were yeah. this was before uh, they were uh, running out of stage AE and they ran uh, oh Rush River Ice Gardens thank I know you. which and, was a oh, train wreck what a mess that was <laughs> and I mean like it wasn't Ring of Honor's fault at all no. but that building is not conducive to. Uh, to to a show like that, you could tell they were trying things mm-hmm. in the yeah, market. They, they did that. They did. Um, they did the uh, Royal Rumble weekend. They did the convention center. Now that was good. That they did, did very did, very they well. They drew over a thousand there yes. at the convention center, um, which was like you know one of the smaller rooms at the convention center. But still, you mm-hmm. know, it was a nice. It was the nicest building they had been to before mm-hmm. stage AE. Mm-hmm. You know, you're used to like yeah, we're in the middle of a hockey rink that doesn't have heat mm-hmm. in January. For six episodes of taping, it it was just obscene. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's good to see they've kind of found that groove in the stage. AE. Mm-hmm. it is really telling. Um, I got an email today. There's an NXT show here in the same same venue uh, Thursday night. And I got an email mm-hmm. today saying, "Hey, seats are still available." That show, the last two times it's been here, has sold out in like sold a day. Out, I have not been able to get to those shows. Well, I mean, but if you remember, the last show was main invented by Finn Balor and Samoa Joe. Right, right, right. So, we, they don't have nearly I the main remember that night all too familiar. <laughs> but, but, then, but then the last <laughs> Ring of Honor was sold out. And, you know, I lucked into being able to go there through other means. Uh, I think but, Top Prospects was also, uh, if it wasn't sold out, it was close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the last two times they've been in stage A, it's been packed, and that's that's been good to see that building. And and I think that's a, I think it's also a really good testament. I hope indie wrestling is looking at like, hey, look, this is what can happen in the city as well too, um, because I've always made an argument for I think more needs to happen in the city because I think it's going to be more accessible for most people. So I agree. I was just, you're getting a comment here in the chat room that mm-hmm. they also did Cal U. They did do Cal U. That was a giant building, though. I mean, yeah, I yeah Cal U is huge. And yeah. RWA did one, and it, 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 you know, and it was kind of the same filling problem, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, ROH is just better off covering that up. Also, a big logistical problem because I remember being stuck in the uh, parking garage with the wrestlers and the fans because we couldn't get out of the parking garage. What happened there? Uh, the the gate was broken. <laughs> And everybody's in line, and then here comes like Ray Rowe and guys, and now they're getting in uh, die jack, and they're getting mobbed by fans because they're all in the same mm-hmm. uh, garage three blocks away from the arena. You know, it was just, it just seemed like that shouldn't happen, mm-hmm. you know, in a case like that. But I mean, Cal U's kind of been rough with events like that in general. So, but again, another kind of tryout thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, they hadn't done Pittsburgh in years. I don't know. I they mean, did. They did something at court time once. I remember. Yes. And you know, they, I, you know, those relationships aren't there, and you know, it's new management and everything. So, mm-hmm. you know, kind of interesting to see how that's rolled. So, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll see. Uh, I mean, it's really good to see what Ring of Honor has been doing lately. I think they're, they're on fire. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been trying to catch more of the shows, uh, TV wise. And uh, it, it was, we were just talking about some some stuff that was on the TV this this past yes. week. They were in ECW Arena, and mm-hmm. there was an interesting thing where they had uh, some a fan get uh, uh, hurt oh, that was, as that part was of it. Nuts. Was that? That was nuts. That was that was nuts. That was nuts. And we we're talking we we're talking a bit about that too. But I know I was watching that. I was just like, oh shit, <laughs> you know. Well, that's another example of a venue who like like when I was actually in attendance that night, and that build. I mean, the building was packed. Mm-hmm. They they drew a huge crowd. But the arena can only hold so many. I think maybe no. like fifteen hundred tops. Yeah. So I mean, you, you, there's it, once you you know, 
I think they found the right buildings that they can, you know, they can sell out or they can pack those buildings every single time. Mm-hmm. So they've got the right buildings. Now it's like, can they make that leap to the next, to the next level up? I've been having that thought with indie shows. Like, you know, if, if it, if you're looking in a building and there's a giant amount of space, right. And, and, you know, like ice gardens, we always saw, mm-hmm. uh, they were like shoved up in one corner. So mm-hmm. it looked like that was all the space and, 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 and it looked like we fill it. Right. Mm-hmm. But you're sitting there and there's that vibe of like, wow, there's a lot of empty space around me. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at indie shows where, where, you know, it's a good number of people, but then we like have all these chairs because mm-hmm. we wanted this many, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it, it doesn't like feel like it was, it was a fill in capacity situation well that happens a lot i've seen a lot of indie shows that run in like high school gyms or something like that where they'll draw respectable you know two three four you know even 500 people but it's a it's a gym that seats 2000 and everybody's sitting wherever in the stands and it's nothing nothing is nothing nothing is piped and draped nothing is 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 uh cordoned off uh so they're you know and nobody wants to go no you have to sit here but Mm -hmm. um sign seat yeah, and you know, or or if you do something where, you know, you include floor seating, like then the stands are empty, or you put the camera on the opposite side where everybody's sitting. Yeah, you know, you know, for whatever mm-hmm. reason, and, you know, there's a lot of ways. If you look at the taping they did at Court Time Sports Center, it doesn't look like the Court Time Sports Center IWC runs. Mm-hmm. And even back then, they didn't have the rigging that we have the light overhead and dark. And so they piped too. and they piped yeah. and draped it. So yeah. so it doesn't look like because the biggest thing was. This needs to not look like a basketball court. Yeah, court, absolutely. You know, and and that that, that presentation is really key. Mm-hmm. So, hashtag no hanging on hoops. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that too, or no jumping off the basketball hoops like some people are about to do <laughs> in the area. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I think it's worth mentioning. I, I didn't have this in the rundown. And this is, you know, no, no. Let's stay on wrong, stay on wrong Ring of Honor for a moment. Uh, Stephen Amell. Yeah. All right, Bravo. Mike. I, Mike. I know you're a big fan of this. Are you following what ha- this happened? I think maybe I, this may have actually happened in two Texas, weekends ago. I think it was in Texas, San Antonio. They yes. had a show, and yeah. Stephen Amell was announced, mm-hmm. and apparently was in a match. Uh-huh. Is part of the Bullet Club with Cody. He has a shirt. shirt. Mm -hmm. He has a what what was the shirt? Vigilante Club. Vigilante Vigilante Club. Club. Vigilante Club. Oh, okay. And by the way, if anyone is looking for a Christmas gift for Mad Mike, I will gladly take a (laughs) shameless shameless pandering uh, on that end. But okay. No, 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 but uh, anything Stephen Amell does with professional wrestling, I'm entirely on board for. I wouldn't be surprised if. He has an appearance at this show that Cody and the Bucks are going to do. Hmm. It wouldn't shock that. me at all. Absolutely, that. absolutely, uh, uh, Mike. So, so did you follow what happened around this event? I wasn't able just because I've been working for the past like umpteen days. So I, I've only seen a GIF of him going through a table. Yes. I don't even know. I don't even know who did it or why. I assume. It is an enemy that caused the crisis on Earth X. I don't know. I, I assume it's something in that realm. <laughs> that's about <laughs> all I know too. Is, is he went through a day one news part of Bullet Club? So, which I mean, that's a, that's a good one. Oh. Big news, mm-hmm. big for Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, a, a good for them. It, it's weird. It, and and mm-hmm. in, in, again, it didn't look like it was maybe a high end. Uh, televised event or recorded event. I'm sure it was recorded for a ringside or something. I think it was, it was a pay per view. Was, was it a pay per view? I think it was a pay per. Was Survival of the Fittest? I think it was at Survival. Of the oh, Fittest. was okay. So that would have been that would have been Cody and uh, Chris Daniels. So oh geez, yeah, and that was when um, I don't know. Did you see the picture of uh, his burns? Cr- yeah, Daniels back. Yeah. Oh yeah. good lord, he got it messed up. Yeah, it, it, it was great. Somebody commented how it was like it looks like you got your rings uh, wings ripped off. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. So, I mean, hey, play into that, I guess. It's it's nice to hear Firestorm also made an appearance at that Ring of Honor show, apparently. Firestorm? But, um, t- well, well, it, it, was, oh, it was a flaming uh, table. I see what you did there. Flaming table, Sork. Okay. Jokes. Uh, yeah. Good effort. Jokes. Over my head. Um, okay. I got you covered. Yeah, thanks for that. The human torch took a bank loan out. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Wow. Yeah, it was bad. Wow. We are really trying for it this week. 
Um, anyways, we'll get into some more wrestling talk. Mike, I think we had just had that Ring of Honor show I've been pitching to you for a while. Sorg, if I can find an easy way to watch Ring of Honor, we might do Ring of Honor. Oh, man. I'm telling that you, man. Website, that website was never reliable. What? Well, there was, no, you use Fight TV. No, I'm not using Fight TV. <laughs> What's wrong with Fight TV? I, I have too many apps to watch too many things. Oh, so delete geez. one. So many apps, so little time. Too but, many apps. But then, I, and if Fight TV won't steal your credit card information like the Impact Wrestling ones won't. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, you know. You literally couldn't pay me enough to watch any more Impact Wrestling. That really? is true. That really? is true. Oh, apparently, uh, Tina's saying it was the Bullet Club and Stephen Amell versus Scorpio Sky, Flip Gordon, and The Addiction. Oof. That sounds fantastic. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. All right. Well, in the meantime, uh, you know, when you're, you know, trying to recover from your uh, botched flaming table spot, you can do that right up the street here with our friends at uh, Slice on Broadway. No, that's Mike. That's Slice on Broadway. <laughs> our good friends. I have to chat wrestling with them every week. Usually they're like, what the hell are they doing on SmackDown with uh, with Shane McMahon? Uh, <laughs> as we get our uh, goods for the week. Support in Pittsburgh Podcasting with a perfect pepperoni and pizza. Uh, feeding our guests here in studio uh, as they join us here on our Tuesday evenings for Podcast Day. Uh, check them out here. Uh, like I said, in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And their new fourth location over in East Liberty, over in, in Google Land over there. Uh, you think some Googlers are stopping in to slice on Broadway these days, perhaps? I think they're kicking the doors down. You think they're kicking the doors down? Yeah, well, they can afford a new door. And here, I'm going to hijack this commercial because, speaking of Flip Gordon, you can see Flip Gordon, Cheeseburger, Chris LaRusso, Killanova Sage, Anthony Green, and much, much more this Saturday at the world-famous Monster pa- Factory. MFPW presents the middleweight medallion cha- uh MFPW will be crowning the first-ever middleweight champion, a one-night tournament, plus... Delirious from Ring of Honor puts his Supersonic Championship on the line and a special announcement from heavyweight champion Mikey Webb. And of course, Chris LaRusso will be in attendance and will be fighting to be the first ever MFPW middleweight champion. There you go. Brought to you by Slice on Broadway. (laughs) This week's indie indie check-in. We we should should sponsor an indie check-in. Slice on Broadway is so good, it will make you delirious. Ooh. There you go. Not bad. Better. (laughs) Better. Better. (laughs) It's been so long since I've seen a good delirious match. Uh, It's been too long. I don't think there's a... There isn't a bad... I, I'm just saying, seeing a delirious match. But there, there so. is not a bad delirious match. No, absolutely. I've seen, I've seen delirious was my first favorite indie wrestler. <laughs> and you know he's, uh, you know he's he's gone corporate, so to say. Uh, but he is still like, corporate I mean, delirious. he can still go. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, he he can uh, he he can still tear it up. Uh, and I think that like at a moment's notice, I know I know his responsibilities now are are outside of the <laughs> ring, but. Uh, he at least from my opinion, he hasn't lost a step. He's been at that for a while too in that position. Mm-hmm. So, I and in my legit, mind, I would legit kill to see a corporate delirious gimmick. Though. In my mind, <laughs> I want to see delirious, just the delirious mm-hmm. in a suit. Yes, at a booking no, the meeting. Slash. At the booking meeting, <laughs> as delirious uh-huh. Uh-huh. is the best thing in my mind. Like like everything you've seen, like just mm-hmm. take every video you've seen of Vince McMahon in like a booking session mm-hmm. and just place delirious in a suit. <laughs> Huge swerve. Come back. Huge swerve. <laughs> and he has to wear like half moon spectacles over his mask. That seems right. You hear it. Like, you heard yeah. it. That yeah. seems right. That seems right. This is a great so, visual. So it's Michael Cole in a mask. Uh, you don't know Delirious, do you? No. Oh, we need to. But you, oh, just, you just Sorg. described somebody where Michael Cole wearing a mask to me, though. Okay. Sorg, Sorg, we need to show Larry, um, as soon as the show is done, the conversation between Chris Jericho and Delirious. Oh, yes. Oh, God, that was that was years ago. It at was. This point. Yeah. It was years ago, but oh, my. as soon as I saw that promo, I'm like, I need everything Delirious possible in my face. Uh. Mm-hmm. Really? Okay. Moving yes. on. No. All right. Like, that guy. No, wait, 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 no. No. But, uh, well, I got a mask. It was in my face. You did, oh, that's, you did that's, get a mask in your face. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. It was also interesting trying to buy a t-shirt from him because he's, mm-hmm. you know, 
he's delirious at the mm-hmm. table too. Mm-hmm. So does that mean it's free? No, 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 no. It's just the interpretation no, it, as you're trying to ask for a two X t shirt. Have you ever seen Jane Goodall talking to chimps? It's similar to that. Oh, all right. Except no, not except, really. So no, no, it's not close at all. So, Where are you going? Do with they this? use sign language? What? There's a currency exchange afterwards. Well, at the time, she also he Does also he had Daisy Hayes, yes, so yeah, there was an inter- a, there, there was an interpreter, interpreter at the yeah. time too with with mm-hmm. Daisy. So yeah, Daisy Hayes is wrestling Shane Goodall. Jeez. Wow. All right, deep deep <laughs> indie cuts right there. Um, <laughs> I had something That's... else. Oh, I wanted to, I wanted to chat for a little bit about uh, this kind of new women's invasion happening in WWE right now because I'm confused. <laughs> Um, um, so am I. The the names, sword. Can we talk about how how terrible the names are? All right, what? all right, all it's right. Like Lady Shield. Explain, yes, Lady Shield. No, but it should be Shield. Like no, if we're just gonna no. do that's no, awful. I'm Mike. sorry. No. The Riot Squad and nope. Absolution. No. no minus five. The stars. Riot Squad no. and Absolution are just random faction names. Absolution. That they have. Absolution is what the the um, League of Nations should have been called. Ooh. No, 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 seems, no. I think so. It sounds like an. Maybe they should have called him Insurrection, that British paper. No, yeah. <laughs> Insurrection with an X. Yeah. With an X. That's me with an X. But uh, both of those names just sound like they were faction names. They just had Lillian Garcia read for people who were making creative wrestler stables. Well, the Riot Squad makes sense. Ruby Riot. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Ruby, the Ruby name Riot. That, the name makes Ruby sense. Ruby Riot. The. Faction in itself does not. In, in both these cases, it just seems like we really kind of pick names out of the hat of NXT girls that can move on. Um, yeah. There's no yeah, common especially thread. Especially like, someone like, ready. I mean, it's, if, we were if on if the verge. It, we were on the verge of Ruby Riot and like Nikki Cross kind of being a weird tag team thing, mm-hmm. and now we just have Punk Girl, Country Girl, Jersey Girl. <laughs> No, pu- no, no. I, th- punk, I think both of them girl, have MMA a girl, punk girl, MMA girl, blonde girl. Like it was literally the same on both. Shows. I, I think I it was, it was, yeah. it was pale leader, uh, brunette, badass, <laughs> hot blonde. Oh, there's a formula. You're yeah. saying there's a formula. Yeah, dear pale leader. <laughs> and but <laughs> jokes aside, I, I mean, I think that uh, you know. Uh, and I'm going to say Crazy Mary Dobson just because I, I know her better as that is a Sarah Logan, right? Is that the yeah, yeah. Sarah yeah. Logan? I don't remember Heidi her, Lovelace. I don't remember Ruby Riot, her yeah. ever being so country though. She impressed the hell out of that, me, and I don't. That, that, that was quite the twang. Yeah, that was. I don't. That, I've her heard her voice. talk before, and I don't remember the the. I know she's Kentucky, mm-hmm. but I didn't know she was. She Kentucky. is a badass. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, like, she's a badass. I mean, I I the, I you know seeing her in some of those hardcore matches is like oh my. God, I and, know and her just, from Ring of Honor she, mm-hmm. and the Gathering of the Juggalos. Yeah, and she's like several a, times tag teaming with she, Madman Pondo. Yeah, yeah. I saw her get a like, bear trap cl- uh, put on her hand, and, and like, there's not enough money in the cash box to get me to put my hand in a goddamn bear trap. So, you know, she is a badass. What were you saying, Bobby? She. Um, she was really impressive on SmackDown tonight. Mm-hmm. It was like it was when they beat up Naomi. It was like, you know, Sarah Logan just like beating the crap out of her, and then little Liv Morgan coming up and like like mosquito pounding her, like little mosquito hanging around. I just I don't know. I like Liv Morgan. I don't. I mean, she's okay, but she I don't. I don't. If, if Braun Strowman has to sell Shane's punches, anyone yeah. can sell Liv Morgan's punches. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, mean, you know, I, I think part of it is, is that, um, you know, we've, you know, there was the initial women's revolution and mm-hmm. we've now seen a lot of those of the matchups that you could get mm-hmm. from that first wave. You, you, you know, you've seen, uh, you know, Charlotte and you've seen Sasha and you've seen them sort of pretty much wrestle each other all the way through, you know, they went all the way through the rotation. So I think it's time to, you know, restock the shelves and bring in some new blood and some new matchups and some, some new combinations. Um, and I imagine and I th- if it was Abby Leith instead of Liv Morgan. Now. Yeah. But Abby Leith isn't, she's not known yet. 
Wait, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But, Who's known but, out of this group? But Abby, but Abby Lath would also overshadow Ruby Riot. You would. Ruby Riot's on par. They're Ruby on Riot is on their trying. It depends on what city you're in. Okay. But if you what? No, I'm, no, I'm well, serious. If you go, if you go to a city where Sh- where Chikara was huge, i.e. Philadelphia, where the Royal Rumble is supposed to be, but that's, that where there's be supposed to be a women's Royal Rumble. That that's true. I have heard that rumored as well. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, Tina's asking if AEW hasn't served the de- cease and desist yet. Yeah, I don't think they have the money to do that for one thing. Um, as well as they've been think, doing. I don't it. think anyone has the money to serve WWE season to season. No, 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 no. I did hear them drop Super Kick Party though at the Survivor Series. So, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's trademarked. So I was just poking. They're just poking the bear at this point. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah. one one other but thing that sausage. one other thing I think that this also you know bodes well for uh, a lot of the girls on the indie scene right now is with this call up. NXT is probably going to have to restock the shelves here pretty soon. Yeah. So I think uh, that. Man, but know, they had a lot. Of I, no, NXT yeah. is already restocked because of the May Young Classic. Yeah. Uh, but love, they didn't sign all those girls. They, I love they that. They said they signed most, eight, eight of them. They should have signed Jazzy. Damn it. They yeah. did. I think they did. I think she was one of them. I love they're, that they're we're talking. Seen her, you, could, you could have Jazzy Gabber be a random surprise in the Women's Royal Rumble. That'd we didn't even go that route. Mm-hmm. She's favored in my tweets. Yeah, She's because I mean, okay in my book. Well, good for last you. Year, last year, Daniel pat yourself Romero, on the back and Jack you know, Gallagher. call yourself yeah. Sally. <laughs> Sally. Okay, I'll call myself Sally because Chris told me to. <laughs> she Hold, on. My tweets. <laughs> Hold on a second. We gotta change this to <laughs> Sally, Sally F J yes. Town. Oh. <laughs> there you go. All right, you're set. You're Bravo. set now. I don't have a wig. Here. Sally sausage. <laughs> but I do have the Oscar mask. You do it to see and creepy. Uh, now bite it. <laughs> well, now, bite it. Look, now bite it. <laughs> I'm biting it. Look at Bobby what? being seductive over there. <laughs> <laughs> Sc- sorry, excuse me. Thanks. Chris. Are you okay? <laughs> Al- Al- Are you okay? Allergies. That was probably the snap. Oh, God. See, I just looked up at the other screen. <laughs> and he's there he biting it, too. Oh, screen cap oh, that. Guys, God. Screen cap that. That's window. our image tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. window in the world. Uh, uh, oh, I, like, hey, I, I want hey, making, making Chris LaRusso sick on the show. That was easy. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like Jim Kramer with that button. You need more buttons if it were, no, we're not doing no, that show. No, don't give for, g- for the love of God, don't no, give him a no, soundboard. No, no, no. Sorg, I've been saying so, so. Sorg, I've been saying it for years. Mayhem soundboard. I'll tell you what, you I have a, one. I have a soundboard here that I have just been sitting on my desk since the old studio. And I still have not like had the goal to hook it up because I'm afraid to. I don't even trust Sorg? myself with this power. Sorg? I'll do it. You'll do it. Of course you'll yeah, do Sork. it. No, Sork. You know, Sork. I think if anybody should get the power, it should be Larry. No, I think Sork. He, I think Sork. he'd be responsible. This is why we have the best producer in the world. No. Well, well, sorry. I'm sorry. She, the, uh, yeah. Hold on. Mike's on. Is this I broke the show. <laughs> yeah, you hear the click. I did. <laughs> is this not what I'm supposed to be sitting here doing? Oh, no, you have way more important Just hitting a buzz. Just, just buzz. All right, topic over. Exactly. Oh, there you go. I guess that, that I, might be appropriate. Or when I'm trying to get Is Mark Man still in the room? Wrong. Gimmick yeah, over, Missy douche. just plays it like around the horn whenever she wants us to move the fuck on. <laughs> we should have a mute button. Like, oh, but, but the horn. Our horn should be DJ Z going... Bah, 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 bah. No. Yes. Yes, it's no. yes it's motion, motion like, denied. No. Apparently, sorry. <laughs> Sally I'm says no. In there. I'm, see, I'm seeing a lot of laughter. That sounds like motion because I shot it down right away. Yep. Sorry. You've All been, right. You've been overruled. Other news of interest this week: the 2018 pay per view schedule has been uh, put out. Oh, geez, what's the source for this? Jen Carlitz. Uh, Jen Carlitz. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm sure S- SES Scoops is a, a reputable uh, website. Um, so we, it's a subset of WrestleZone. Good news. It is? Oh, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, it, good news. Two shows have been dropped. 
So that is no, two, that's two, bad news. Is that bad news? news? We great balls that. of fire. I'm sorry you're not getting your great balls of fire next. I I'm sad Roadblock didn't come back this week this year. <laughs> um, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for there's it. Still, there's still a chance for Roadblock to resurface. Because remember, it wasn't on the list the first time Roadblock. Showed you're just up. saying like, Roadblock wait. may be on detour. Did are yeah, we are, no. are we using traffic? Roadblock? descriptors for like no we're not going down that line again okay. uh, we, 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 we had a, like half a show that was that one time um, other notes um, <laughs> WWE lane merge coming up in 2018 well fast lane WWE is still graphic pattern fast lane is still around um, WWE click it or ticket Royal Rumble and Philly of course <laughs> we knew that uh, uh, they're really going to try that again yeah the, the uh, last time that the Rumble was in Philly did not go wait, well. Wait, it's well, in Philly. And, and, and oh, you're Florida talking about Florida. a couple months. Roman yeah, is yes. probably I thought this winning was that Rumble again. Philly, or the Rumble after this one. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. All right. Um, although I'll be really sad if they get, oh, like, if they get like every year is going to be that. Uh, Survivor Series is going to be in L.A., uh, Staples Center. They already announced that. That's good. Um, we are going to have Pittsburgh... We are slowly crawling out of our timeout from our Royal Rumble experience. Oh, shit. Sorry, Batista. We, uh, we are going to get Battleground, a yeah, Raw yeah, pay-per-view yeah. this year That's in the one with July. All the, flags. the one with all the flags. I actually like the flags. They, they used the flag in the uh, Kevin Owens 365. Cool. I, I like, I was like, that was a really cool imagery they did with that. Um, other notes. Uh, well, WrestleMania, of course, is in New Orleans. Uh, uh, my birthday. Hashtag on your birthday. birthday. There you what go. if they just dropped WrestleMania? <laughs> Fuck you, Bobby. <laughs> no, seriously, though. What if they just dropped WrestleMania? They're like, we're going to keep Great Balls and Fire and drop WrestleMania. <laughs> Great Balls of Fire is the new WrestleMania. <laughs> um, Great Balls of Fire 34. <laughs> right, now, I have a question. Is is WrestleMania numbered this year, or is it going to be WrestleMania start button? Or well, WrestleMania? I, I think it's... I, 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 <laughs> The logos have not been numbered. It is it is numbered in this list, but okay. I would not say that is an official. Uh, it, it's picture. probably gonna be like WrestleMania Mardi Gras mask. I think it had a fleur de lis on it. A what? Oh, oh the, yeah. the, the the thing from the New Orleans Saints logo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Money in the Bank will return to a dual brand pay per view. Yes. Thank That's Christ. Awesome. Gonna yes. have four Money in the Bank matches, hopefully. <laughs> yes. No, I I hope they I hope they just have two. Do we have a tag team Money in the Bank? Mm-hmm. Like while we're at it. This oh is, yeah, five. Yeah, okay. Or you know, money be, in the bank. Match. You know, it'd be really cool to have an NXT Money in the Bank, so Ooh. someone from NXT could randomly cash in on a mid card title of their choosing. So a very, a very um, rule centric. I, I don't know that that that'd be that could be interesting. I know. <laughs> hmm. I think that'd be really fun because then you'd have someone in NXT who you could. Wait until you think they're ready to Wait. be called up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. King of the Ring, but with Royal Rumbles. What? What? Hear me what? out. Hear me out. What the fuck what? are you talking eight about? Royal, eight Royal Rumbles in a tournament. Okay. Turn his mic off. Wait. Oh. Wait. It's already broken, so... Uh, I mean, he's man, already on backup mic, so... Nobody acknowledged he spoke. Hey, is no it... one calls me backup Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my improv team. Backup Mike. <laughs> On that point, listen, guys. If you guys want to, if you can't get enough wrestling, and if you're listening to this show, that's probably the case. We got some more. <laughs> if it's not, then you're listening to the wrong show. Yes, uh, if you've been listening to us for the last forty-five minutes talking kind of about wrestling, I thought this was an episode of Hee Haw. I got good news for you. We're all fans of Lucha Underground around here. Yes, sir. And yeah, we are. over on IndieWrestling.us, which you can check out a lot of Chris LaRusso matches there for uh, very reasonable prices. Very reasonable. For various uh, promotions. A, a bargain. A An bargain. absolute bargain to see Chris LaRusso. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but also, we just brought on board our good friends at the uh, Cleveland Knights Championship Wrestling, CKCW, up in Cleveland, uh, which includes many of the stars of Lucha Underground, including Taya, Va- uh, Taya Valkyrie, uh, Ricky Reyes, uh, Joey Ryan, 
and others. Uh, I know there's been TNA, TNA stars. Oh, Congo Kong. Congo right. Kong's there uh, squashing the crap out of J-Rock. A uh, friend of the show, J-Rock, is involved. Eric Bischoff has been announced for their upcoming February show. Friend of the show, Shane Taylor, Shane Taylor of Ring right. of Honor, is part of this promotion as well. Go check it out. CKCW. Shows available right now, available at IndieWrestling.us. I believe the very first time these have been available on digital download. So go check them out. Uh, for All four of their shows in the promotions history are now available up there. Uh, so new promotion, a lot of hot things. They're making a lot of waves these days. Uh, so check them out over at IndieWrestling.us and catch up with what they're doing up there in Cleveland. Like, good to see a lot of things happen in Cleveland. Between these guys... Um, uh, Premier, Championship, Premier Championship, wrestling, Championship Wrestling, also on US. Chris, you're a part of that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of great stuff there. Um, and, of course, our friends at AIW, not a part of IndieWrestling.us, but we will pl- we'll put them over to the moon, too, because they're, they're great guys and friends of the show as well. Uh, we will be right back with a big question submitted on our hotline. You can uh, hit us up at 412-206-WMS0, and we'll be, be back with that after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. And we're back. And we're back. Yes. Thank you, Chris LaRusso, joining us and moving the show along as we're we're talking Boone with Bounty Hunter off air and other fantastic things happening in and outside the wrestling world. What a horrendous uh, looking movie. <laughs> what? Boone the Bounty Hunter? Yes. Yeah. Look, look at that. Larry's uh, Larry's into it. Yeah. He's <laughs> speechless. <laughs> we had you at Kevin Sorbo, didn't we? She's like old and what? Not, not Hercules. Hercules was a long time ago, man. <laughs> Hercules was a long time ago. Now he's old and racist. What? <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler but alert! Isn't everybody at Kevin this Sorbo point, is like, an old racist person. In this what's movie? the big question? Do you have a big question? <laughs> to our chat room, allegedly. Larusso knows the show better than we do at this point. Uh, but we do have a we do have a voicemail from our good friend Daniel Tiger back with us. Jeez, Daniel Tiger! I muted this. We'll fix this. This is your friend Daniel Tiger, all the way from Tennessee. And I have a question I ask you guys, and I don't know if you guys answered this question in the past, uh, but here it is. What was the most uncomfortable moment in professional wrestling that you've seen on TV? I'm just curious about that, okay? Because that's a, that's a, cause I know there has to be at least quite a few out there that you guys have seen in the past. So um, if you get the chance, I'll, I'll be hearing that tonight or hear it on Wednesday on iHeartRadio. Thank you guys so much. Bye. There you go. Proof that people do listen to us on iHeartRadio. Coming at you, Benky and Big Bob. Uh, so the question is, what were some uncom- what was it the most uncomfortable thing you've seen on television and pro wrestling? Um, and I feel like... It's a lot to choose from. <laughs> it's a lot to choose wait, from. Wait, does it, does it have to be live or can it be upon a repeat viewing? <laughs> what Mike's gonna say? Most ba- of the Attitude Era on a repeat viewing yeah. like, like, is is oh, pretty rough. Mike's gonna say yeah. Bound for Glory. Yeah. No, no, you don't know what I'm gonna say, and I'm it's. I'm curious. I I think we should just go ahead right. with Mike's answer right. here. Okay, all right. Um, so this is back when I was working at WWE. Um, and is when you were you were you were you were uh, logging tape for WWE. Yeah. Thank it, you. Basically, basically, uh, do you have the network? You're fucking welcome. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> basically, uh, we, we watched all old shows. We chronicled them. We databased them, everything like that. The most awkward I've ever felt because I didn't remember what this show was this show when I grabbed it because we were doing pay-per-views at the time. I grabbed Backlash 2004. Mm. For those of you who don't remember Backlash 2004... The main event of that show was a it was a raw pay per view. The main event was um, Triple H going up against Shawn Michaels in a triple threat match against the new World Heavyweight Champion Chris Benoit in oh. Edmonton, Canada. Ooh. With Chris Benoit getting the win and celebrating with his wife and child at the end of the oh. show. <laughs> that is the most uncomfortable. I've ever felt. And the best thing about it was 
I did not have to write anything about it because we were not allowed to. We had to flag all Chris Benoit segments. Like, I clipped some Shawn Michaels Triple H stuff, and that's essentially it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was the most uncomfortable I've ever felt wrestling. Sorry to bring it down. Also, look up Silly Sausage. You'll appreciate that <laughs> much better. Much better than anything else I've ever said. Wow. Fuck you, Bobby. Who who wants to go next after that? <laughs> um, I can I I mean I, I could probably do an entire podcast on uncomfortable sh- stuff at indie shows, mm-hmm. um, but I will keep it to uh, the national companies. The most uncomfortable I was ever watching. Um, I was in college, and this was when Chrissy Hemi won the Diva Search. Okay, so this is oh god, I think I was like a freshman or a sophomore in in college, and I remember there was a girl who I was talking to at the time. And uh, she wasn't a wrestling fan, but uh, she agreed to to watch the show with me. And I think it was Trish Stratus um, beats up Chrissy Hemi and then spray paints slut in big letters on her back. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking like, well, this girl's out of I mean, that that, you know, that shoots this down because she. I could immediately feel the energy in the room just change. And it was like, oh, I was just cock blocked by WWE. And uh, I mean, now along those lines, I've been watching some uh, Attitude Era uh, Raws and Nitros. And boy, y- you forget how, uh, like, do you remember the gang wars of like 97? Mm-hmm. That was really uncomfortable. Uh, it, 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 it's a good like the gang wars of '97. Yeah. Like it's just like it feels like you're in a you're like at a bar in New York City. I remember the gang wars of '97. Yeah, and it was just uh, oh, the white supremacist bikers versus the Puerto Ricans versus yeah, those <laughs> the black separatists. Yeah. Okay, we Vince, have, we Vince have, clearly thought this was a good idea. We have a song sure. on this show about that. And then oh, uh, along those time there was um. There was a Raw in Canada where Shawn Michaels just is trolling the crowd. And they mm-hmm. start chanting a very, very inappropriate word. Like a, you know, 10,000-seat arena mm-hmm. chanting a word at him that is not okay to say. And, like, venom just, like, pouring out of this crowd. And that was really uncomfortable to watch. That would, that would be the other F word. Then. The other F word. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh! Because yeah. he was sticking, that, that, he was sticking the Canadian have... flags in his pants. Yep, and he was dancing in a, you know, he was he was being Shawn Michaels. And I think Brett called him that at one point on TV, didn't he? I think uh, he called him something else. I don't think he called him that. Okay, he called him. So- he he definitely referred to it. Yeah. yeah, because I think it was right after Shawn's Playgirl spread. Yeah, it was yeah, around yeah. that time. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, well, I was watching through some of the milestones, mm-hmm. and they have. The Sean Brett feud mm-hmm. and all of that stuff, like you know, like early matches into like Heart Foundation rockers into mm-hmm. the Screw Job, and then and, and I think them reconciling, you know, mm-hmm. you know, a few years ago and everything, and then like some of those promos are like, wow, you know, mm-hmm. and also that they, you know, we we complain about like the promos today, mm-hmm. like they were like 10, 15 minute promos, and they were not nearly as interesting. In that era, it seemed. I, but I bet they were a lot more interesting. But they probably were at the time. Yes. You know, you know yeah. uh, if you think about uh, at the time, poof. But well, especially when you hear the stories afterwards, like the Sunny Days promo. Oh yeah, oh, a yeah, lot yeah. of people didn't pick up on that when it was first mentioned. But then it's like, oh, okay, we're going there. <laughs> that's that's weird. They took a lot of shots at each other for you know stuff on the road. You know, very uh, insider references that like twelve people got, but. You know, they knew what like, each other were talking about. Like the closest thing we've got since then is the Usos mentioning a certain video Xavier yeah. Woods might have been in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. even that was pretty tame. And, oh, yeah. It was it was incredibly tame comparatively. Yeah. And probably everybody's in on the joke at that point. Right. I would think yeah. so. I'm surprised it hasn't come up again with Paige coming back. To be honest. Oh, we're uh, going to. Yeah, it's no, not going no, to. No, that, yes. uh, but I do realize that's the reason she didn't go to SmackDown, folks. Hey. That, no, because she was drafted to SmackDown. Oh, that's right. She was drafted to SmackDown. Alberta was drafted to Raw. Like, 
I, I, like it dawned on me. I'm like, oh, that's the fucking reason. That's that's exactly it. Now Oops. he's been drafted to Impact. No one gets drafted. No one gets drafted to Impact. You're forced. You just kind of You're just forced, wander man. in. Um, Larry, what was your most awkward? Um, I don't know. There's a couple that come to the top of my head. One was May Young giving birth to a hand. That one was uncomfortable. Um, and that hand went on to be a state senator. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of politics, the next one was uh, Kane and Lita's uh, kidnapped pregnancy thing that they did <laughs> miscarriage oh miscarriage yeah i remember that thing uh snitsky kicking the baby mm-hmm. <laughs> well, i saw uh, uh laura lovelace made a comment about lita and edge mm-hmm. the uh yeah. the 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 live sex celebration yeah which birthed this podcast segment which, yep <laughs> which is the <laughs> very the first thing we talked about on this show episode one like dude we saw lita's nipple <laughs> yep <laughs> Yep, that was like one of the first. Is that like 15 years ago at this point? Uh, like, well, uh, 12 yeah. in January. Oh, yeah. Um. Yes. <laughs> I I know there was some more stuff in chat room, but I want to get well, through everybody sure, first. Sure. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, no. I have, oh you I have, have one. one. You have one. Booker T dropping the N word. Oh, yeah. oh. Did you watch that live? <laughs> I might have. You might have. I know you. I you watched a lot of WCW that. back then. I heard about yeah. That. Yeah. How about oh, Vince you dropping YouTube. the M word? Yeah. Oh like, yeah. 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 Two dropping Booker it, T. Like... Two Booker T. I thought it was to Cena. No, it was. To it was to Cena. It was to Cena. Booker T, was, to Cena. Booker, yeah. well, Booker T said, was there. Didn't say that. Yeah. Booker yeah. said, "Tell me he didn't just say yeah. that." Yeah. 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 Bobby, how about you? Um, I have two. Um, the first would be um the Piggy James storyline mm-hmm. with yeah. Lake Cool, which almost. Got the Be a Star campaign to pull their affiliation with WWE, which that was like not cool. <laughs> that whole thing. Um, and the other thing that I was thinking of was um, Kai and Tai and Val Venus. <laughs> <laughs> the whole choppy choppy <laughs> Philly thing. sausage. Yeah, silly <laughs> sausage. God, and the Val attitude Venus era was great. Really. What would you say Val Venus's <laughs> entire career? In WWE. Yeah. No, yeah. that that was really kind of funny for a lot. Of it people. was for a while then... because, like, the thing is with Val, just about everything Val Venus did, the character was consensual. <laughs> no, Jesus no, I mean, fuck. no, I mean, no, God. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. Like, of all the uncomfortable things you can talk about with pro wrestling, like, like, um, uh, Tom in the chat room says Randy Orton kissing an unconscious Stephanie while Triple H watches. What about Stephanie being ask? drugged for That's the wedding? Incredibly we- uncomfortable. Stephanie Did being Bobby drugged for the wedding. To take the towel off before he took it off. No. <laughs> no, Stephanie would when Triple H drugged Stephanie when they were married. Well, yeah, yeah. that was yeah, yeah that That's was another one. Bet he's regretting that one. <laughs> or 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 Undertaker trying to force Stephanie into another. Stephanie's been forced into a. Jeez, lot of yeah, guys. wow. <laughs> um, I guess it kind of makes sense what? why she's such a power figure now, oh, considering how her career she's began. She's been through a lot. Yeah, that's why she's such a bitch now. She's been through the ringer. Like, listen, I've seen some shit, <laughs> and mommy's like, gonna crack down. Like, I just, I just want her to eventually <coughs> go up to like, like uh, Jason Jordan and be like. Have you ever been dragged into a boiler room with soot covering your face and tied to a cross and had to marry the Undertaker? No, you haven't. So shut the fuck up. What uh, was Vin, what did Vince always t- say to CM Punk? I owe, I owe you one, pal. Maybe yeah. he gave all his I owe you ones to Stephanie. Oh, <laughs> uh, so mine is situational. Okay. Um, so do you remember when uh, Trish Status, I think she was uh, managing TNA at the time, not the, not, not the Fed. Yeah. Tested, tested Albert. Albert. Yes. God, Trish Stratus made should have been, DNA would have been a much better company. Yes. Which should have been testing abs. And they were feuding they were feuding forever. with the Dudleys. And there was a certain segment where they were, she was kind of, I don't know, taunting them or something. And she was in lingerie. Polishing a table? Uh, huh? Yeah, like she polishing was, a table or something. Okay, she was I re- trying to give okay. Bubba wood. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, I mean, by itself, hey, that was the era. And, hey, I was in high school. That's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Problem was, when I watched that segment, I was in high school. 
as is, I was in our media class, and there's a little studio there where we did. Like, oh, you were actually in. No, the I high was school. in high school. You were in class. I was in class. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you get an awkward boner? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Chachi yes. and That's Chachi yes. might have been there too, actually. That, um, so, or did you and Chachi get awkward boners together? <laughs> <laughs> We're in class, and for whatever reason, because you know, at the time it was Nitro and Raw, and you taped them and and whatever. For whatever reason, I had the tape, and I had popped it in. I don't know. We were watching some of it just to see Raw from the night before while we were doing whatever work in there. We were like probably dubbing tapes or or you, know, you had A B edit stuff, so it took forever, right? Uh, which is two VCRs, and you you take a clip and you time it, and and you have to do that all oh, in okay, order. Okay. What's a VCR? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. throw that back keep, there. Keep I know we're gonna lose. <laughs> Anyways, so I I in there, and, and and that segment pops up, and then you know the jock asshole that always gave me shit walks in and said, "What are you watching in here?" And that awkwardness ensued. Yeah. So oh. wait, sorry. Did all three of you get an awkward boner? <laughs> Next topic. Move right. on. So here's here's Silly here's changing the here's changing the yes, topic. Yes, please. Um, didn't Sable appear topless technically? In yes, the with, yeah. with body oh, paint. With the body yes. paint hands. Oh, what yeah. about cat? What about cat? Yeah, cat. Yeah. Well, you could make the argument with like okay, again, Tori going... too. I think they did something like that with the troops. Bubble wrap. Yeah, they, did out, they did out Jacqueline, too. Yeah. All right. Young. So, again, just going back to the Attitude Era. So many from the chat room. Yes, we need to get to the chat room. <laughs> um, I'm going to stand when Edge pinned Biola. That happened? Oh, yeah, that was really yeah. suggestive. Yeah, because really? Ed- Edge he was thrusting pit- as he was bending. Yeah, he had her yeah. legs bent over her head. It was like, oh, mm. wow. Um, I'm wow. going to... Go ahead and from the bottom up on this. Okay, uh, okay. Tina's in there. Triple H, Booker T angle leading up to WrestleMania 19. Yeah. yeah, there was yeah. a lot of there was a lot of you people shouldn't have this kind of talk. Mm-hmm. If I remember, I got one after this. If nobody else has one, well, we had to, <laughs> Tyler says Chris will never come back. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> uh, Dave Podner comments uh, recently it was Hell in the Cell with Shane and Owens on top of the cage. I really thought someone was going to slip and fall off or yeah, that, was, that was scary. Oh, please that was, don't. That was die. scary. Yes. Uh, most uncomfortable thing was Dante Fox versus Killshot. Hell of War match, but it was amazing. That's oh, from yeah. Alex Miller. Uh, Tom Skipansky, most uncomfortable Randy Orton kissing an unconscious Stephanie McMahon while yeah, Triple H watches. Hey, and I think it was we, more so we, the Triple H watching. Real, Everything Randy Orton is, is uncomfortable. True. Um, Laura Loveless is talking about uh, Val Venus getting someone pregnant. She lost the baby by falling off the ring or something. Ooh. Uh, Wasn't Terry, that Terry, Ryan Terry, Shamrock? No, Terry Reynolds. Yeah. That was Terry. Oh, okay. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. During ECW one night, one night stand when Edge pinned Beulah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we were just okay. talking about. Yeah, that's so the chat room even had quite a few crazy. I got one extra one. <laughs> Go for a Bobby. Wrap it up. Muhammad Hassan. Oh, oh! I, I, yep. have, I have one more, and this is this is to be clear. To the Muhammad Hassan. Or in general, or the night where the, he got kicked off of SmackDown? In general. In general. <laughs> Ruined that um, man's life, pretty much. The only character um, that's ever been killed on WWE yes. television. Well, maybe. Uh, no, Paul maybe not. Not. Was he killed? Yeah. I mean, that was the implication. Vince's car blew Rock up. Was... Yeah. Yeah, but he came back. Uh, uh, maybe the Ascension tonight. Awkward. Yeah, the Ascension <laughs> tonight. Yeah. <laughs> It's Awkward true. moment. Mm-hmm. Um, last half hour of the Chris Benoit uh, tribute oh, show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 When yeah. you started reading the internet and there was a press conference and you realized, oh, shit. We I have, a, I have it, a kind of when, a dark story. It's when everyone else backstage started putting two and two together as R- well. Regal, when Regal goes on for his, I don't know, like you know, confessional moment and Regal knows what's up. And you can just tell, and that I, I there's a kind of a I don't want to say a dark story, but kind of a weird story. I remember I was supposed to wrestle Scotty Gash, like uh, the next weekend, and earlier in the day when we had heard that he had passed, I remember we were texting back and forth about you know we should do something in the match to kind of like uh, you know pay homage to to Benoit, do some spots and some moves that he would do, and then like we're. You know, as the news starts trickling in, it's like, oh my 
God. And then the uh, the crazier thing was the very next day, I was training with uh, Shirley Doe. And uh, normally when you get in the tra- everyone's talking and everyone's, you know, making jokes or talking about what was on Raw that week or whatever. And I remember we just put our boots on in silence. Like the, the entire, like nobody felt comfortable being there. No one knew what to say. And we all just laced up in complete silence. And Doe was finally the one that went, you know, goes like, so who feels like wrestling today? And broke the, the tension. And uh, yeah, that was, that was an awkward moment that carried for like another six months. Anytime you were around a wrestling ring. Yeah. I remember that was one, that was one of the weirdest podcasts we ever had. Too. Yeah, that was an awkward discussion because we were like working through it mm-hmm. on the show, you know, and all the weird mixed feelings around it and everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's brought us down. Okay, so, okay, okay, so okay, so one more awkward moment to bring us back up: Orlando Jordan being weird with lotion. Oh, <laughs> and it's back. We should there have we go. Heidenreich and Michael Cole. No, we tried Heidenreich to. and Michael Cole. I completely forgot about when Heidenreich kidnapped Michael Cole. Wait, That's what? just aggressive poetry. Was... Wait, That's you don't know about Heidenreich? Poetry. I don't know who that is. Oh. Hey, Mike, Mike, poetry slam. <laughs> What's it, what about um, the Why was JBL? Why was never JBL, the poetry um, slam? Uh, JR uh, getting... Uh, Degraded by uh, Vince. Yeah, that's happening. Oh, that one was, uh, oh, the that which, one. which time? Like bringing in the Bell's palsy and all that stuff, and, and the 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 anal like yeah, like, like yeah, surgery. Okay, yeah. it was almost, they did. All right, I'd say it was worse when they did Oklahoma, guys. Yeah, they, that's true. When Kane tried to burn, <laughs> guys. I remember that, guys. What what are you showing them? I totally forgot who that was. Oh, Heinrich. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I love it. you. Just show him that image. And he knows of Cole and Heinrich. <laughs> yeah. That's all you need to know. Yes, producer Missy. Hey, hey, Bobby. What did you learn in wrestling this week? What I learned? What did you learn in wrestling this week? Oh, I have to go first. I'm on the spot now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. I'll give you some inspiration. There you go. Pass. <laughs> pass. <laughs> Come on, Sally. What? I'm going to forget that I made this Sally next week when I have you on. Who's your guest yeah, next week? Marcus Mann, right? Uh, Marcus Mann. Um, That's going to be popping up in front of his face. Bobby, what'd you learn? I learned. Yes. That I was impressed with one of the new groups that debuted on Smack or on wrestling this week. Mm-hmm. Um, the Riot Squad. <laughs> With two T's. With two T's, yes. Riot yes. Squad. That's how I'm gonna. That's how I'm gonna pronounce your name. By the way, that's also what I wear. Ruby Riot. I, I have to bring this one up because I, I forgot about this, and we were like, "What the hell when this happened?" Uh, Dave learned where to keep my pancakes warm. God. Oh my! Because yes, <laughs> cool. on SmackDown tonight, uh, the New Day came out. And Big E pulled uh, um, uh, uh, pancakes with all the trimmings and syrup and everything out of his tights. That's not the first time he's and done that. And handed them to the U- Usos. And the Usos were very pleased to see pancakes. We'll get it. Is, is Big E the new pancake person? Uh, uh, hey, oh, <laughs> he, he's the... Ha- I also, you know why they call him Pancake? Because he flattens fools. <laughs> I also learned that the deity inside Matt Hardy's vessel has been woken. <sighs> I'll believe that shit when I see it. Oh, it's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. We've said it's that. happening. We've said that before. It's happening. We've said that before. Fingerlings. <laughs> <laughs> Larry? Shit. Um, oh, I thought you were ready. I, I thought you... Well, I was until that just completely killed every brain Sorry. cell in my yeah. head. And Larry just started thinking about I, fingerlings. Um, I learned that discussions like this is why we can't have nice things like, you know, guests like Chris LaRusso on a regular basis. No, this is why he comes yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry Kenby, for I'll be back next week with Marcus Mann. There you go. Just no, come I, hang out. I, I, can I, I actually want to ask you something. Can I come by for the 600th episode? In two weeks? The Christmas episode. Can I come by for the for the? Yeah, 600th? everybody. Open invitation. Uh, by the way, let um, me just put this out there. Open Chris, invitations. Chris, do December- you know what happens on the 600th episode? Well, I know the STDs normally make an appearance around Christmas. <laughs> That's, the same, um, that same is night. Christmas show. Same night. There, oh, the, it's going to be the show after, directly after that recording. 
Chris. That Chris, night. Bravo. I got news for you. Yep. I'm coming to IWC like this. <laughs> I will jump out of the ring and I will physically assault you. I will I will I will beat you about the head and That's upper not the torso. First time you've you can't me. do that. That's Gambino's. I forget what's your what's your match at Winter Takes All again? I will be in the battle royal for the high stakes title, ensuring that Bulk Nasty <laughs> remains the IWC uh, high stakes champion. I'm just gonna come out with that mask on and you're just gonna jump out of that ring. <laughs> eliminate yourself. I think we get Russo we have, eliminated by right, Sally right. F from J. We're gonna see if we can enter Bobby with that mask into the battle royal. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm, go sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm gonna ran this back in. Yes. Who do we still need to learn something? From? Oh, Larry, what'd you learn? I learned that the Ascension is no. You know what? I forget. About, I'm not even gonna bitch about them tonight. Uh, the fucking Basham brothers, the new Basham brothers. Oh, the brothers. Bludgeon brothers? Those guys. You fuck learned those guys and their costumes. You Deadpool. learned fuck those guys in their costume? Yeah, that's all. Jeez. They look Not like the Basham Deadpool. brothers. The Basham I like brothers. them. I like the Basham But you're brothers saying just too. this look isn't working for them. I can't remember what their names were. You also have a problem with the mask. Yeah. I learned problem. to appreciate Mojo oh. Raleigh. What? I learned to appreciate Mojo Raleigh also. Wow. Because one night that happened, he turned heel. I'm, I'm happy. That was a pleasant Chris surprise. LaRusso, what would you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I'm going to go for what I learned from wrestling two weeks ago, and that is that uh, AJ Styles is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, mm -hmm. He is just having an amazing year. The match with Brock was, was, was fantastic. And the thing was is that I've heard people say, oh, that wasn't the best match that he could have had with Brock, and I 100% agree, and the match was still awesome. I think, you know, just the, you know, uh, you know, since leaving TNA, he goes to Japan, two-time IWGP heavyweight champion, like match of the year candidates. Uh, he comes to the WWE at the Rumble, match of the year candidates with Cena, match of the year candidates, and then the it's just up, 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 up. And, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer, uh, AJ Styles. Will, and we always knew he was great, but I think that he's proven in the past year he's going to go down as one of the best of all time. Yep. Awesome. Uh, Mike, did you go? No, I didn't. Um, what did you learn um, this week? I, I, I learned that Raw's a lonely, lonely place without the Miz. Raw's a lonely, lonely... Got Elias, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to shout out uh, Elias, though. Uh, Intercontinental title shot. You know, no, from... Elias... That was, was a really great. good match, too. Elias was great, but I... I don't know if I can take, like, six weeks without the Miz. Said I don't no know one if I can ever. take it. I... I it's going to be rough. It's going to be because I'll, I'll ask you guys this before. Who is the lead heel on Raw? Stephanie. Yeah. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a major problem. Hmm. The fact that I'm still not even sure if that's right. Like, like there, there's no heel on Raw. Yeah, it's not Braun anymore. Kane. Nope. Kane. Kane. <laughs> that's also a problem. Is also a problem. Like, His dishonor, the mayor. He, sh he, I would be okay if he did a complete gimmick repackage and we called him the dishonorable Kane. Like, what, just Demon Glenn mayor. Jacobs in a judge's <laughs> robe or Demon something? Mayor. It's just corporate Kane with the mask on. <laughs> I do know that. I do know that Kane needs his throat for mayor in there. He'll use the voice thing. Uh, yeah. uh, he comes full circle all the way back to the beginning. I object. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, I learned. I learned. No, I don't have it. You have learned it. where to keep your pancakes warm. I learned where to pay you my, did. leave yeah. my pancakes warm. Yes, I, I absolutely, hot. absolutely learned that. Um, <laughs> I learned that Arn Anderson... Oh. We didn't talk about Starcade. Still, still got that spine buster going. Starcade you know happened this weekend. When they when they happens, show us Starcade, we'll talk about Starcade. <laughs> yes. If, if 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 a Starcade happens in the woods and it's not televised, did a Starcade happen? Did a bear nope. shit in the ring? <laughs> Here's some money. Go see a Starcade. What? We did see clips this week. Although <laughs> Missy, what did you learn this well, week? <laughs> I learned that I actually like wrestlers when they're not wrestling for WWE. 
like that's just that's the thing like i'm liking seeing what people are doing when they don't have the confines of oh, WWE, so like Ryback. Cody, like <laughs> exactly, like they're doing some really cool stuff. Ryback, mm-hmm. they have a little more Ryback? autonomous <laughs> activity to, to do it. Mm-hmm. So I, I this I is a huge Ryback fan. I am not a huge Ryback fan. Um, I, I am, yeah, I, am yeah, I am not Daniel Hooven. Yeah, you are. I am not Daniel Hooven. You, 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 yeah, you saw the Ryback in person. I did see Ryback in person. Yes. nice guy. Nice guy. Yeah, I didn't have much interaction with him. I did see him. I did not interact with him. Um, he 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 denied doing an interview, but he was very nice about it. Oh, that's, there so you go. I have to give him that credit. So you're welcome, that, you're welcome for Steamboat, like, by the way. Oh, yes, Steamboat. Oh. Steamboat looked at you like you're like who the hell is this guy? And like no 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 no, he's cool. He's cool. He's cool. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, he he did acknowledge that. Yeah. So no, absolutely, that's amazing. I, I re- it, for for those of you know, at Night of the Superstars. Uh, Sorg's this is for Indie Mayhem show. I'm going to assume. Yeah. Uh, goes up to Steamboat for an air, and Steamboat just kind of has this look in this like, who are you? I went up and it's like, hey, would you mind? Yeah, you know, having a moment. You know, can I do a quick interview with you? Mm-hmm. And he's just looking at me, and you know, everything else. I he probably just had the match with you guys, or something. yeah, it was literally like right yeah, after, right after. Yeah. So, and I try not to bug anybody <laughs> before a match because I know how rough that is going into it. I, I think it was just that like that whole day was just. Every everybody and their mother coming up because it, you know it's not of the superstars so you know is, what, who are you what what's going on yeah. you know I don't I don't think he, he Steamboat's one of the nicest guys in the world mm-hmm. but uh, he just was very confused about you who flustered are, who Ricky are you Stan and what Steamboat? do you want <laughs> you flustered the nicest guy in wrestling <laughs> well no he just got, okay Steamboat <laughs> just sorry. got back from the ring and Sork's like interview sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was right away, but okay. I try to be a little more tactful about that. Is that any worse than like that. when Renee or these other Renee girls? Young. Yes, I was. What? The, yeah, I was the Charlie the, in the ring. I was like, so ring. you just fucking lost Zack Ryder. Um, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What are you gonna do next? Exactly. It's always easier to get ambushed by by a good looking you know girl with a with a microphone rather than you know sword coming up and be like, hey, <laughs> yeah, six foot four B. Sorry, do you need my Oscar match? Yeah, yeah, I need your Oscar mask. Yeah, that would have helped too. I would have just gotten like Steve would have chopped you right yeah, in the face. I would get karate chopped in the face. <laughs> yeah. Uh and then you would have taken a deep arm drag, sword. And this is also the same weekend. The night before we had a show in Wheeling, and he got off the plane was late. He got into the building just in time for Three the spot. Minutes. Been- Three minutes just in time for the spot at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. And then stuck around, and everybody got a got a uh, uh, picture with him in the ring, wearing the Hall of Fame. Way. Did a free right. did a free seminar the next day as well for the yeah, boys. Yeah, so, uh, so he had he had a lot happening. But then, but after Chris gave the nod, mm-hmm. uh, we went to cool off for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, came back, and we had a great ten minute conversation, and mm-hmm. it was super awesome. Go check it out; it's on the Indie Mayhem Show feed. Um, and on our video feeds and everything like that. So, like, one of the highlights. One of my favorite interviews, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Did anybody else go? Is that everybody? I think that's everybody. That's all there is. There ain't no more. Yes. Chris LaRusso on the Twitter. At Chris LaRusso. uh, The Monster Factory this weekend. The Middleweight Medallion. Also, IWC, uh, Winner Takes All, December 9th. Make sure to check that out. Um, well, you're yeah, looking at me with a. Rate. I was gonna say premiere coming up. Uh, premieres coming up. Um, December. Uh, I'll shout out uh, this Saturday. Also, if you're not gonna make it to New Jersey, Pittsburgh Rise is also uh, at the Stronghold. Uh, check that out. Um, uh, lots of great wrestling in the area. You know, support your local independent wrestling okay. companies in any way, shape, or form possible. And you can find at where Chris LaRusso will be at Chris LaRusso on Twitter, Chris LaRusso on Facebook. What am I on Instagram? I don't remember. I'm, I'm on Instagram. I think you're Chris LaRusso there. I yeah. I just tagged you. Yeah. So. Um, and, uh, I wasn't going to plug, uh, you had a great match with Lee Moriarty. Absolutely, that love, love last Lee time. Hell of a, so hell of a. I, I don't know if they had that posted anywhere, but fantastic stuff. Thank you. And Thank even you. I love the promo before that. Some interesting. Rise is doing some interesting stuff, and mm-hmm. and and they're getting everything together. And I think just keep keep an eye out on them. Mm-hmm. And if you have the time, it's gonna be a good show. I know I'm gonna try and make it if I'm done with my work in time for that too. So, um, Larry, he's right. he's here. I'm here. He's here. Got nothing. Nope. 
I have people for my Twitter. Sorry. Wah, wah. And also on the line, Bobby FJ Town on the Twitters and in your hearts. What's I gonna do to this? There you go. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the new Rick roll. Uh, it's just like, like a fish <laughs> <with it. laughs> oh, No, the Oscar thing is creepier. Now it now if the puppet was was with the mask. Oh. If the puppet bites the mask, is what I'm saying. Oh, Where you I, I did that before. I, I only have one, two hands. Okay, okay, and also Mad Mike. <laughs> Cut him off. Toys and uh, you, you, can, you can find me at your local toy store, and if you say fingerlings in front of me, <laughs> I will cut you. <laughs> Just straight up. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Just straight up. It's going to be interesting there. December. There uh, Sorgatron on the Twitter, and of course... Bobby being creepy with puppets. Good lord. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.